Hello, hello, my lovely friends, and welcome back to the Spooky Channel. <laughs> In today's video, we're going to be making some witches' cauldrons out of dollar store cauldrons. And we're going to do this process basically from start to finish. Um, at least the process of making the cauldrons look lumpy and bumpy and pretty gross and looking like they've been overflowing with some very dubious green mixture coming from what will be the inside. Um, I was heavily inspired to make this project um, by the YouTube channel uh, Wicked Makers. And if you're a Halloween fan and you don't know about Wicked Makers, I highly recommend. They do some really great stuff. So I decided that I wanted to make these cauldrons and the big cauldron is going to go on a fake foam fire, which I have pretty much completed. And I did make a video um, showing how I dry brush, uh, how I paint that. So I will leave that in the description box below. It is October the 17th today and I have not finished the projects that these cauldrons are going to be a part of. So what I'll do is when I get the projects done in entirety, entire, entire, in <laughs> rented lips, when I get the projects finished, I will leave a link below to my blog so that you can go and see um, how and where I put these when it's all said and done. But for today's video, we're just going to do the process of using oatmeal and dirt and some breadcrumbs and some glue to give them this really gross, lumpy, bumpy um, look. And we do the painting. So I'm going to leave uh, the video down below in the description box of the Wicked Makers video because theirs is really amazing. Um, and there was another couple videos that I watched painting the cauldrons and I found that in the comments sections there were people that were saying that they wanted to see more of the painting process that they liked that they were inspired by what was in the video but the person that had made the video basically was like here's the before and here's the after and they didn't really go through the whole process and it seemed to me that people were looking to watch how she had painted them so that they could either A, obviously learn from the process, or maybe combine her process with somebody else's process, which is basically what I've done. I've sort of taken the best of three videos that I saw and put them together to come up with how I, how I painted these with acrylic paint, baby wipes, and um, uh, doing um, a, a wash with water. So I wasn't really planning on making videos uh, or making a video for this process. I was taking photos and some quick videos to put the information on my blog because I thought it would be fun to show it on the blog. But once I read the comments and people seemingly were really like, ah, I really want to see how you painted the thing, then I thought, okay, I'm going to sort of put this mishmash together of, of uh, a voiceover and the little bits of videos and the photos that I had made for the blog to put together this video for you in case you're somebody who really wants to see the process of me gooping on the oatmeal and also me doing all the painting. Now I will say after we were done with the oatmeal, I did spend some time spray painting the cauldron and I was playing around with greens and browns and, and grays. And then I realized that step really wasn't necessarily necessary because once I did this green wash with the acrylic paint, you can't really see the stuff that I did uh, in between. So I would say once your, your oatmeal is dried, I put um, a clear coat over it. Uh, before I spray painted it, but you could probably just spray paint it with black or brown or gray. You don't need to do the whole thing where I was trying to make it look aged in between uh, the stages, but you can't see what I've done here. So you might want to save yourself the step if you're not feeling like you're somebody that wants to play around with a whole bunch of spray paint or you just don't have spray paint. 
The spray paint is expensive these days. Oh my God. I couldn't, anyways, that's another video. So I just wanted to say that, um, I think that's it. I think we can just get right into it. If you have any questions, by all means, please leave them in the doobly doop doo doop underneath there. And, um, yeah, without any further ado, let's get making some really fun, spooky cauldrons. Here are the ingredients that I used to make the lumpy surface on the outside of the cauldron. All you need are some large oats, uh, some white glue. I didn't have sand. Some people ask for sand, but I had this cactus soil in the basement. So I used it, and I think those are old breadcrumbs. <laughs> that I have in the jar. So that was my mixture. That's what I used to create um, the lumpy mix that we're going to be sort of putting on the outside of the cauldron. But you could use anything, I think, that would create basically lumps and bumps. So I've put together all the ingredients here in the jar. And the cactus soil, I have to say, the dirt actually worked out quite well. I was afraid it might dissolve. Um, but it didn't. So if you can't find sand for whatever reason and have some old dirt lying around, and who doesn't? So I would go ahead and try that. Whatever this was, this definitely helped as well. Um, because my concern was I wasn't sure how the oatmeal was really going to, if it was going to stay on the cauldron or if it would be too heavy and sort of fall off. So I'm just pouring in the glue willy-nilly here, but I do note that I eventually go in and use more glue and I use twice as much glue as what's in here. This mixture that I'm putting together, uh, there's not nearly enough glue. As you can see here, I, I struggle. I gave up the brush. The brush was a disaster. So I just started using my hands and I found that at the beginning, I didn't have enough glue. So here I am just mixing it up and I really saturate it with the glue. And then I decided to get out some spray adhesive and I sprayed the cauldrons outside. Do not use spray adhesive in the house. It is super messy and super sticky. But I have to say using the spray adhesive really helped the, the oatmeal and dirt mixture to really glob on and stick um, to the side of the cauldron. Now I didn't sand these cauldrons down at all. That might have helped a little bit. But you can sort of see the shininess on the cauldron there, and that's from uh, the spray adhesive, which I have to say really did work. If you don't have spray adhesive, just kind of just stick with it, and it depends how much of the oatmeal you really want on there as well. You could stick the oatmeal on there, let it dry, and then go in and put more on. I was just sort of being impatient and wanted to get this done in all one day. So, yeah, I think it looks great. Um, it's bits and pieces were sort of falling off, and that's okay because then what I went, I, I let it dry and then I went back. Oh, <laughs> I almost dropped it. Um, I do go back over um, after I let it dry overnight, and I did a very uh, generous coat of this Elmer's cheap, cheap, cheap clear glue that I got at the dollar store just as a way to sort of seal everything in. Because these are going to be outdoors, I was a little bit concerned that if I didn't really glue this stuff on that it would just come off in the rain or I didn't want the squirrels to eat it. <laughs> so anyways, so that is how I got the oatmeal mixture on both of the cauldrons and I have to say I was really happy with it. It stayed on, it's hard as a rock and it was no problem afterwards. So here I am painting, and like I said in the introduction, I would just either use one color. If you're going to go ahead and do the green wash, don't worry about using ivy leaf or the gray. Really, just paint it the one color because you're not going to see all the colors that I layered on this thing um, once I got the green wash on. Okay, so I have been working on painting some uh, spooky cauldrons that I'm trying to make sure that I get this. Um, 
and I thought what I would do is turn on the phone, my camera, so you could sort of see what I was doing. Um, because I thought I would throw my hat into the ring as to how to make and paint these cauldrons. So, this was the small one, and I have to say, I'm very happy with how this turned out. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm certainly no painting expert. In fact, I don't really know that much about painting, but I have watched a ton of videos, and I sort of took three different... Um, techniques and sort of turn them into one. So I just thought it would be fun to show you in case this was something you would want to do for Halloween at home. Okay, so I got these two cauldrons that I got at the dollar store. I got what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how I did the green. I have a mixture here of, this is Apple Tart Craft Smart, just everyday cheap, cheap Michaels acrylic paint and I mixed it with um, just black acrylic paint and I just kept going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until I sort of got this darker, a weird apple avocado type thing. Uh, I'll just... show you my process here a little bit. So, now this is, because I've sprayed this and because I have the, the paint, the spray paint, the, the, what do you call it, the regular everyday spray paint on here, that helps this paint to stick on here. Now you look, if you just start painting it on there, it's obviously not the look that you're going for. So I started sort of wiping it with the paper towel. Sorry if that's bouncing around. And I was like, oh, okay, so that's kind of fun. Because some people go in with their paintbrush and they... They use quite watery paint, and then they let the paint drizz, drizzle down and that kind of thing. So then I started playing around, and I got a smaller brush, and I was trying to get in, because you want to create, you don't want to just have a stripe of green around, right? So then I don't, I was trying to get some of the paint off, I didn't like it, and um, I thought, oh, I'm going to try a baby wipe. So then I got, hang on, I gotta put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. So then I started playing around using the baby wipe to move the paint around and I was like, oh, I quite like, sorry, this is bouncing around. I don't make, I mean to make you seasick. Um, I was like, I like how this is giving this sort of streaky streaky effect yeah I was like okay now we're cooking with gas now I'm we're on to something so I thought I'm just going to use the brush to you know basically apply the paint and then I want to use the the baby wipe as a way to just move the paint around and create some streaks and to sort of create a bit of, of depth here. I really hope the camera is picking this up all right. Now, again, you know, the thing is with these Halloween props, and I have to remind myself regularly that most of the time these things are seen outside and they're seen under different kind of lighting. <laughs> Like, it doesn't have to be a Mona Lisa, is what I'm saying, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. But, as people who like painting things and creating things, of course, we strive for a certain amount of perfection. And so, I just had gone around the little cauldron. Let's see here. Just kept moving the paint around. Oh yeah, that looks great. That's gonna look great under the lights for sure. Okay, so let's just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep the camera rolling so you can see what I'm doing, even though I know it's not, you know, it's not rocket science and it's not the most exciting thing to watch. However, 
I know when it comes to these sorts of videos that it's the process, like, you learn, at least I do, from watching other people go through the process. And with some things, yes, there is that tendency to put it on fast forward and, you know, make it so that you're not watching. Because I know sometimes people are a little bit impatient. <laughs> They're like, hey, get on with it. But I think with this kind of thing, it's very helpful to watch somebody else do it in real time. And I figure this way, if you don't, you either will stop watching, if you're like, okay, I got it, I don't need any more, or you can fast forward it on your own. I kind of like how the, the oatmeal is picking up these little bits of fibers from the, the baby wipe. Again. You know, everybody's going to be like five feet away from this thing. They're not really going to notice. <laughs> but I don't know. For me, part of this, part of making the Halloween decorations and painting all the stuff and doing all the stuff, it's just such a lovely, relaxing, fun outlet for creativity. You know? And you never know when these techniques might come in handy for something else. Like I was thinking, hmm, you know, what else could I do this with to give texture? Like, you know, is this something I would want to do? I don't know if I would want to do it in a journal per se, but it might be something that might come in handy at another time. You just never know. Okay, so we are... Let's see, let's have a look. Oh yeah, that's great. That's great. So I got the, um, I'm gonna turn these, I'm gonna make fake fire to go underneath them. That'll be the next step. While these things are drying, I think I'm going to get out my, my stuff and make the fire to go underneath it with the spray foam. And then I'll just let everything sit overnight before I paint the spray foam. Oh yeah, that's looking great. So I, I would imagine that you could do the same thing. I try to, I have to be honest, I try to sponge. And I found that it was too streaky. I didn't like the, I didn't like the look that it gave me. And then I tried the paper towel, and I wasn't crazy about that. And then when I tried the baby wipes, I just really liked what it, how it worked for me. Okay, Sophie, you stay over there, darling, because this is paint, and I don't want to have to wash paint out of fur. <laughs> you have to come around to the other side, Sophie. Okay, so speaking of, we're making our way to the other side here. We're almost around, all the way around. It's a rain day outside, so kitties do not want to spend too much time outside. Okay, so here we are back to the beginning. Now you will notice that it's the green is not as green as when we started. It's quite, um, it dries a lot lighter as these things tend to do. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna go around and do a second quick coat. Let's have a look, see at this one. So this one's, as this one's drying, it's drying yeah, I think that's going to be good. I think with the lights, I was like, oh, maybe I need... No. <laughs> Just no. Okay, so let me let me uh, add a little bit. Do this again. And this I will speed up. 
And then I'm going to do a little bit of a very, uh, very light brown wash. And when, so I'll do that after we put on the second coat of the green. So give me just one second here. with how this has turned out. Now, what I did was with the first one, I used a little bit of brown, very watery brown acrylic paint. And let's try it on this and see. My concern is uh, whether or not this is, I, I know I keep going back and forth. Um, if that's green is gonna be green enough but I think if I put the green light on it, it'll be good. So let's let's do this now. So I don't mind that, but I feel like it's just, it's green and it's um, streaky, which is great, but I wanna just try and add, just for fun because I'm playing around, um, I wanna try and add some more liquid type streaks in it. So this is just, uh, brown um, acrylic paint. So I originally was going to do some brown painting with the sponge on it, and I didn't like it. So I have this mixture here, and I just added a tiny little bit of that to some water. And then what I was doing with the small one was I was just sort of lightly giving it like a little bit of a wash. And I was trying to sort of create these streaky marks where it looked like, you know, water had, had boiled over. I don't know if this has to be brown per se, um, but I had the brown paint I mean, you wouldn't want it to be pink, <laughs> right? But I'd like to try and get some of these like watermarks down here. So I think what I might do too, because so much of this is water-based, with the way that our weather is looking, is that I'm probably going to give this a clear coat when it's all said and done. Oh yeah, that's, I like that. That's looking great. So there's no rhyme or reason to this. I'm just sort of, you know, I'm just playing around, but I'm quite liking this streaky look that we're getting. And I don't think I would want to use a much bigger brush just because you don't want great big... Well, maybe you do. That's, you know, this is all very... Let me see if I can sort of get that to wash out a little bit there. Yeah, that's good. I mean, the best thing about painting these things really is if you don't like it. Like I was like, if I don't like this, I'm going to take these back outside tomorrow and I'm going to spray paint them black again. I'm going to start over from scratch. But I have to say, that to me looks like maybe in there we could use a little... Again. <laughs> uh, kids are not... Kids and parents are not going to... Are not going to notice... Oh yeah, this looks great. 
Oh, I'm really happy. There. I think that's got us around. I'm just playing around now. Okay, so what I'll do is I will show you a photo of what it looks like when it's dry, but I think that's got it. Um, I think that that's looking really, really good. I hope. You can see it okay. Oh yeah. Okay, so now let's have a look at this this one again. So this is looking quite greenish. It's not as dark. So I think I think in the interest of playing around, I'm going to add I'm just going to play with this a little bit here. Let's see what happens if we just add Almost like filling in some of the, maybe there's enough paint on this. I can just sort of bring up some of the green. Oh yeah, there seems to be, maybe we can just use the, so what I'll do is let's just try and transfer some of this color from the baby wipe. And then I'll do this, the, the wash again. And that seems to be. I'm having way too much fun here. I really do love these Halloween projects for this because because I'm not somebody who feels very confident with paint as a rule, and I have to admit I am a little bit intimidated by it, that this these little projects allow me... I really hope I'm not getting my head in there. That's my favorite trick. These projects really allow me to indulge in having fun with paint, but also I don't have to be good at it, right? Like I can just fiddle fart around like this and add some color and play around and see what happens and experiment. And there's no, the perfectionist in me isn't going to be heavily um, intimidated. Oh yeah, I like that. Ooh, that's good, that's good. Oh, maybe we'll have to do a couple, um, okay, so I'm gonna go just a little bit light on this wash. Oh yeah, that's great. Here, let's kind of just move that around so it doesn't look quite so. Oh yeah. my thumbprint in there. This is a little heavy on the green here, so let's kind of break this up a little bit. Oh, I'm loving this! Okay, I think I'm gonna leave this and then let this dry. I don't, I don't think I'm gonna need another coat on this. I think this is great. Okay, so um, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed that little impromptu video. And uh, if you like this video, please give it a little thumbs up. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Stay spooky everybody. Bye!